Hello, welcome to another edition of Hobby News Daily. I'm still Danny Black, but today I am joined by Ray Schulte, Director of Media Relations for The National, probably the coolest job in the hobby. How are you doing, Ray? Thanks, Danny. Great to hear from you again. Well, you know, I, I've been pestering you because I wanted to get to you early this year because uh, this is an exciting national. I, I've heard more people talking about it. You guys have a groundswell of support, a real grassroots campaign going. Um, and, and I decided we're, we're at 84 days as of recording. Um, and I know that for the next 84 days, you probably won't sleep much. Yeah. So, um, uh, what, what's, what's your life looking like, uh, right now in, in the next couple of weeks and when does it really get 24 seven? Yeah. Well, first, first I just want to, I want to compliment the new management in there, uh, Joe, Jimmy, and Brian, uh, you know, it's because of them that we've actually started much, much earlier because we have so much more, let's say, engagement and experience is that we're going to present at the national and leading up to the national. So uh, from that perspective, you know, it's been great and it gives me a little bit more opportunity to kind of think outside the box and and, and embrace, uh, you know, a lot of things that, uh, you know, in the past were, were, were looked on, but, uh, you know, now we're taking advantage of it. So it, it, for me, you know, we started uh, January uh, and normally I don't start till like May. And so for me, it's, uh, it is a very exciting time. Well, this is what number national for you? This is the 14th national. You know, wow. I started, I, and actually, you'd appreciate this. I started in Baltimore. I, I was going to say, now, I'm not going to do what everybody else does. I'm not going to complain about bringing it to my city like everybody else wants it in their city. Um, but I will say that the Baltimore National was fantastic. No, well, absolutely. And, and I think, uh, just give you a quick background on that. You know, I, you know, I had just finished up finished up representing Cal Ripken. You know, I had I represented him for 10 years, and that's why I was in Baltimore. And then the, I met Mike Berkus in Cleveland in 2009. And Mike said, hey, you're in Baltimore. Hey, would you, you, would you want to get involved with us? And, you know, I love Mike. And Mike Berkus was, 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 was great. And I looked up to Mike, even, even though I was on the outside representing players, I looked up to him. And so I said, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, 2010, uh, it was, it was a fantastic show in Baltimore, yep. uh, you know, and I, I think it surprised a lot of people, you know, outside the, the area there because, you know, who knew? And then, um, and then it came back to Baltimore, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, and I loved it, but uh, I've also worked with all the leagues. I've worked with uh, venues throughout the country, uh, maybe over 30 or 40 of them. And uh, you, and I get asked this all the time too. Um, yeah. Well, why can't we move it back to Baltimore? Why can't we do it? It's just that you know, with the size uh, of this you know uh, show, it's just you just can't turn around and pivot as quickly as many people think you can. And you know, for us, uh, Chicago has been great. But you know, what it does, it boils down to the the exhibitors vote anyway. Uh, right. Management just presents opportunities and they vote on it. So uh, it is what it is, but we're happy to be in Cleveland this year. Uh, Cleveland has always been a great uh, uh, venue for us. Uh, the last time we were in Cleveland was 2018. And, uh, you know, <laughs> people that remember that, you know, we had a Ferris wheel, uh, like on the main floor, and we had uh, an airplane and all that. And uh, those are gone. Uh, the innocent days. <laughs> Those are gone, but uh, it, it's going to be, it, you know, the people working for working with us in Cleveland are fantastic. And uh, it's, it, it is a great, uh, I call it a great sports market. I really do. And I think that uh, most people uh, appreciate that too. I was, I was just up in Toronto at the sport card expo yeah. and, and, and uh, everybody was, uh, from Toronto is coming down to uh, yeah. Cleveland, which is, one of the things I kind of set out to wanted to do is kind of bring Canada into the fold. And I think we've, you know, Canada's show has grown and I think, you know, we're going to get a lot more Canadians and I've already got Canadian media coming down uh, in, in more so than ever before. So it's, it's, it, I, hopefully it's working. Well, maybe we'll have Molson served at the uh, national one here. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I, I, I just want to say this. Uh, there's going to be a whole Canadian contingent. There's going to be like a trade night for Canadians only. So, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 I love it when it grows like that. Well, I guess hockey will be prevalent. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because Hobby News Daily, we get close to it's somewhere around 8% Canadian readers, mm -hmm. um, which is a much higher number than I would have expected. Um, so I think and, and a lot of it is Toronto. So I think there's a huge base up there. Um, and, and I think it's great to bring them down and get them involved and not just have the expos north of the border. And so, don't get, uh, and don't get me wrong, we, we get uh, hundreds of people from London, uh, you know, for the Far East, Korea, Germany, sure. Australia, but uh, uh, that part of it uh, from the international perspective is really growing and growing fast. Um, you mentioned the new management, biggest changes we can expect this year. Oh boy, it's just you know, I know that's a loaded question. No, I mean, it's a good question. It's, it's just, you know, they want to engage uh, with the attendees. They want to engage with, um, you know, with, with the exhibitors. And so there's a lot more thought put into it. And there's a lot more, I tell you, there's a lot more work uh, that goes into it because of, you know, because of the different things we have planned. But, uh, you know, some of the things are, you know, it work in progress, but they're, you know, I mean, I'm working with all three teams. I'm working with the Cavs, I'm working with the Browns, I'm working with the Guardians. And who knew that all three of them, the people that I'm dealing with and on a multi-level are, are all collectors. That's and, cool. And, you know, so, you know, like my conversations with them, it's not like, well, this is a trading card. This is why it's <laughs> popular. It's like, they get it. I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like Ray, speed it up because we want to get to the next point. You know, it's like they're they're and they all basically say, "Hey, we're in." You know, just you know, let's figure out how and and uh, so that's that's a great part of it. And I think, you know, I think as we move forward, um, one of the things that I've always wanted to do, and uh, and I I kind of you know, uh, I, whenever I have the opportunity to say it, it's all about collecting. It's yep. not it's not about just a trading card or a piece of memorabilia or bobblehead. It, it's, it's, the, it's the con, you know, it's the concept of, of collecting yep. uh, and you can collect anything. And I think, you know, the more we, we talk about that, the more people, you know, I, I've seen more people resonate and more people respond in a way that, you know, it's like, wow, that's cool that, you know, and it's all about, you know, collecting, it's, it's all about memories and, and so I think that's one of the things that, you know, we, we, we want to focus on too. It's like providing experiences that will create a memory for a lifetime. And, Absolutely. And, and I think we can, we can and we will do that in Cleveland. The show has gotten, <laughs> without a doubt, more kid-friendly over the years. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there's been a transition, really not just at the national, but in the card collecting, you know, world in general. Uh, and I, I love to see the kids get involved. Does it catch you off guard sometimes just, you know, the, the, the kids who are, are, are innocently just starting? And then you've got some of the kids that carry around the, the, the suitcases with more with a better collection than I have. I mean, the, the, that, the, the under 13 market or the under 15 market has really exploded. And a, and a better bankroll than you have, too. I, I'm telling you, I can't, I can't keep up. I'm sitting here working like a schmuck. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's it's. Uh, I'm glad you asked that because you know, you know, Mike Burkus was the one that really kind of focused in on the you know the kids. I mean, I remember years and years ago. I think like kids uh, 12 and under got on free, but only on weekends. And and then I think Mike moved it up. Said, hey, let's make it the whole week. You know, uh, 12 and under. Now this is years ago, and so I think Mike was a visionary, and so he was the one that kind of got that started. And then we started talking to the manufacturers and we talked to our exhibitors. We talked about, you know, promotions. We talked about how do we do that? And at, at one point, um, we brought in Brody the Kid. I don't know if you remember Brody. I, mean, I know Brody like, very well, yep. Brody's not a kid anymore, but he, he is responsible. For me, he is responsible for getting that kick started in terms of, you know, uh, reaching out to the kids. Brody would go to the manufacturers. He'd get product. He'd do break it. He'd do all that stuff. And he did such a great job. He's, you know, 100% authentic in his passion 
for not only his own you know PC, but it, but for kids. And so he he did a man a fantastic job of kind of uh, being like well, my first media ambassador. And and I tell you, I, I look back and I tell everyone that comes on every like we have a uh, like a much broader media ambassador group now. And Brody's the is the is like the Babe Ruth of. Of, of ambassadors because he's the one that really got it started and yeah so you know we were always kid wanted to be kid friendly and, and engagement and we understood mike understood that you know you bring the kids in and it may bring in you know their dad or their mom or their uncles their grandparents and and i think we've got to that point where um not only have we brought in the kids but we brought in you know the the, the, the female uh kids too Yep. The, the younger girls um, and their mothers now and and their grandparents. So, it, you know, can it grow? Absolutely, it can grow. But I, I, we're really happy with, with, the, with the process and, and the level of success that I feel like, not just us, but the hobby has in terms of bringing women into the hobby. I know I know that you look at it and say, well, we need to do this and do that. I, I think we're, we're doing it, you know, we really yep. are. I mean, I, I look out there, there's some amazing women that yep. are not, not just collecting, but being leaders. And, 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 and you know what's funny, Danny? I don't, when, when, when people talk about it, I don't think of them as women. I think of them as hobbyists, you know? Yep. I don't differentiate. And, and so for me, it's like, okay, cool, all right, great. I mean, but we, we, you know, we, we, I think if you look at our social media, we're always, Anytime we get a chance to, to promote um, someone, uh, a female in the hobby that's doing great job, great content, yeah, we'll take that opportunity to promote it. So, Well, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say a couple of things. First of all, I saw Cheryl Miller was announced as an autograph signer. Um, so uh, I know she just retired and she's one of the goats of uh, basketball. So glad to see her signing this year. Um, and then we have 20 writers on our staff at Hobby News Daily, and I, I am proud to say that Brody is one of them, Kayla Northworthy, uh, oh, yeah. Courtney Recklin, Laura Rizzo Schaefer, uh, Caitlin uh, Gaska. So uh, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more that, that it's just such a great time in the hobby right now um, for everybody, you know, to, to get exposure and, and to really be a part of the hobby. Um equally so uh you know you and i i think agree on, on the importance of that um moving forward uh, you had talked about specific cities working with chicago working with cleveland without getting into like details of a specific city can you just talk about the logistics from needing a, a union perhaps to the size of the, the space only fits certain you know convention centers and really you know how, how much goes into the back end of even considering Good. Yeah, well, I'll start out by doing this. I mean, the management group, they're responsible for doing due diligence, going out and looking at different venues throughout the country. It doesn't matter where it is. I mean, just so we understand, you know, what the parameters are for that. It could be Denver, it could be Kansas City. Um, and, 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 and by the way, they, they come to us all the time, you know, and pitch and pitch and, and but once you start doing your due diligence and you start getting that information and things are starting to check off, there's a lot left blank. Like in other words, will they guarantee that space, uh, you know, three years out, right. you know, will they um, look at things uh, a little differently in terms of guarantees? I mean, like some, some may be open in like two or three years, but they may not guarantee you because they're looking for a pharmaceutical company to come in and take over, which is maybe double the money that we would bring. So right. you, but you, you can't, you can't guarantee, you can't go to them and say, well, we'll take a chance on it. You can't do that. Uh, and they're not that many venues anyway, trust me. Um, you know, you have venues like New York, LA, um, and, and others, but the one, the, you start looking at the expenses, you look at the availability of hotels, you look at the cost of hotels, uh, union wise. I mean, I, I remember I was working for the Major League Baseball at the All-Star Game in, in Philadelphia, and everyone says, well, yeah, the Philadelphia Convention Center is great. It is, except that, you know, when you work with 20 different unions, mm -hmm. it's a lot tougher, and it's not going to have the same experience 
that our exhibitors have now in Chicago where you can roll your car up to your booth and you can uh, load and unload. And I mean, things like that, you take for granted after a while, but in many venues you can't do that and it's much more expensive. So, you know, and, and we have the experience so we know, you know, what we can and can't do and bringing it back to an exhibitor and saying, well, listen, you know, here's, here's the deal, uh, but it's gonna cost you X amount of dollars more. Well, I mean, we, yeah. if it was even practical, we would do it, but once it gets so blown up, it, it, it's impossible to do. And, and, and then, you know, then you have the location. I mean, uh, there's a lot of things that go in Atlantic City, um, they were they were they were bending over backwards because they're looking for business, right? But right. at the end of the day, there's there's a lot of dip, there's a lot of things that that needed to be addressed that weren't addressed and that just weren't appropriate for our for our decision making. Um, but you know, it, it, yeah, a lot of these things, a lot of these venues are not open and um, and, and available, and and uh, and then again, they don't have four hundred to six hundred thousand square feet either. Um, or the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Or the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But also, also too, <laughs> well, somebody will say, like, I, Pittsburgh, Major League Baseball, we had a great show in Pittsburgh. But it was two floors. Toronto was two floors when we yep. did the, the All-Star game. We, we will never do two floors, you know, yep. at, this, at this point, you know, uh, because it just it's, it doesn't make sense. Maybe in the future, but right now, we, we, you know, we're not looking at that. So that cuts out a lot of different um, – uh, venues as well. And, 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 I, and I'll just end with, and there's many more, but I'll just end with this. I mean, like we have a hotel guy who does nothing but look at reservations and, and, and blocks out, and which again, a lot of people don't realize and appreciate that, you know, going into a venue like, like this, you know, they could raise their rates, you know, 30, 40%. And and so we have people that that you know that's their responsibility to block out rooms. You go if we just moved into Dallas, well, it's going to be a lot more expensive. Yeah. You know, hotel rooms, transportation, all that kind of stuff. So, trust me, there's there's a lot of different reasons why you know we're limited in terms of where we can go. But uh, the good news is we do have a venue like uh, well, Cleveland's a good venue. Yep. Uh, Chicago is a better venue when it comes to, you know, in, in, like all the above. And so we're just, I mean, and I know, I know there's a lot of exhibitors understand that. I mean, we're just very, um, you know, we're fortunate to have a venue like uh, in, in Rosemont. And, and so, you know, for the next three years after this, we'll be in Chicago and maybe something will open up after that, but uh, we'll just keep digging. Well, I know every interview you do, you're going to get asked to bring the national to somebody's hometown. So I, I, I definitely wanted to uh, explain that there are some parameters that are involved. It's not just uh, throwing darts at a map. No, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so every time I see you at the national, you're, you're, I call it like race speed. You, 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 you you're, you're, you're moving around. Do you ever get a chance to actually browse and, and, and take it in, or does it, or is it like a wedding when the bride and groom never get to eat? Yeah, no, you're you're spot on with that. I mean, I, it's funny because once I get there, uh, it's nonstop, and and you, you think about it, there's always something that needs to be done, something needs to be addressed, um, needs to be confirmed, and so uh, yeah, I. I I, I, I get to a point where, you know, uh, and, and the, the other thing is, too, yeah, you have like 20 or 25 people that you've said, hey, let's get together when we're there and, and good friends or, or you know, business contacts. And you end up after the show, you go, oh, my God, I didn't get to see so and so. It's like, I mean, yep. and, and, and so that's the frustrating part. Um, but I mean, uh, I'm not complaining because, you I mean, all that time is spent doing something that I feel is worthwhile is beneficial. And, uh, and I do meet a lot more people that way too, that, you know, maybe I can't spend a lot of time on the, at the show, but after the show, um, you know, weeks, years on, I can. Well, I always enjoy uh, running into you at night when we get, can relax a little bit more. <laughs> That's the fun in the national. Yeah. Uh, so going, going in, um, 
I see, it seems to be that every year the autographs get, get kicked up another notch. Is the popularity on that just continuing to grow? Is, is that just a, a growth area? Or is it that you have to keep it fresh and, and, and push the envelope to kind of top the year before? You know, with TriStar being our, our third-party vendor, they, they do a fantastic job. You know, yep. Jeff, Bobby, and Mandy, they, they, they do a great job. And, and I know they talk to a lot of different, um, I call them uh, autograph promoters. You know, we, we've kind of gone to the way to where there's actually promoters that are just autographs. And, and, and so, you know, they, they do a great job. <laughs> um, but I also, too, um, I, you know, being an agent, I understand that I want, I, if my player is available, I want my player at the national. Yep. Because where are you going to get that kind of, you know, numbers in terms of fans and, and uh, to be able to be in a position to, you know, to, to make, you know, a, a decent paycheck, at, you know, as a result of that. So I, I uh, you know, I, I think that like with agents, they'll, they'll make exceptions, they'll change, um, they'll, they'll change, um, you know, uh, schedules to make sure they come to the nationals and so yeah you end up like with the julia Irvin, you know um Mike right, Jackson, like you know, all these guys i mean who are you know a a plus i mean cheryl miller i mean i think you know she, she she's to me the epitome of of, of a legend you know i mean she's yep. an olympic gold medalist uh, she's a, a hall of famer she's I mean, she's uh, apparently I don't, I've never met her, but she's a really cool person. Um, so I think I think I know she's going to go over extremely well at the national. Um, and sometimes it's just you know a, 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 you know a matter of, you know, of scheduling. But I think for the most part, you know, we're we're probably on the top of the list when it comes to that. I, I think it shows it. Um, you mentioned you're an agent. You work with athletes. Um, Don Mattingly being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I got to ask you, I saw he grew that beard earlier in the year. Are you a, a manly beard guy or a manly no beard guy? Oh, well, you know, it's, you know, I, in the very beginning, I, I, I got it. I understood it. You know, then he started growing it, and then I kept asking him, well, are you going to, when are you going to shave it? When are you going to shave it? And, and that, uh, this was at the end of spring training. And, and, and I said, you're going to shave it before the season starts. Right. And he goes, uh, I don't know. I don't know. And, uh, so he kept doing it, and then, and then apparently, um, uh, I was well. I was up in Toronto this weekend, and uh, I was on the field with him uh, for batting practice, and he, and he walked over to me, and he was clean shaven. Uh, <laughs> you know, this is this past weekend, and I said, well, "What did you do?" And he goes, "Well, you know, we had a bad series here, and so I just figured we need a new start, so I just shaved." You know, it was like a superstition. You know, that's great. And so, yeah, he, but he had a lot of hair on his face. I mean, it was like triple what you have. And, and I know <laughs> that, that that's why I had to ask because it was a significant, uh, significant, uh, major yeah. league salad on that chin. Oh yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah. He was uh, he, at least at least he he's able to do that. I couldn't do that, you know. You could do it. I can't do it. But, but well, I don't know I, that I could pull it off. I think you have to have some s success in the majors to be able to to wear that around. But I got a lot of feedback because everybody loves him without the beard. I mean, they just love Donnie baseball, the young Donnie baseball, and and so they they're all they all appreciate the fact that he has shaven it. But at the same time, they say, hey, you know what? Yeah, he got it out of the system. <laughs> well, my first significant card was his rookie card. So uh, even though I'm an Oriole fan, true and uh, you know, forever, uh, uh, Don Don Mattingly has a special place for me. Um, so I, I always enjoy your timeline and getting to see the pictures of him. Um, so thanks for sharing that. Um, well, I and, got, and I yeah. got to, I got to introduce, uh, doc collectible and, uh, uh, Jay from Mojo and, um, you know, uh, to Donnie up there in, in, in uh, Toronto and, uh, and they, and they loved it and they got some great video on it too. But, uh, I, I always enjoy introducing Donnie to people because he's, he, he's such a down to earth, just authentic guy. Uh, he's the same guy today as he was back when I started working with him in '84. Um, yep. And you can't say that about too many, you know, players. And but uh, he hasn't he hasn't changed. If anything, he's become even more, you know, um, you know, more in tune with what's going on. And and uh, you know, he, he'll always listen and he'll always um, make you feel like you know you're you're 
you know, the, the guy that he's talking to. So, well, I, I appreciate this superstition. Um, I always love hearing uh, that, that it doesn't matter how long somebody's been in baseball, a winning streak or a losing streak, he, he still, still sets them off. Um, Ray Schulte, we have 84 days uh, for the National Sports Collectors Convention. The website is nsccshow.com, July 24th through the 28th. Uh, tickets are available now if you haven't gotten them already. Hotels, jump on that as quick as possible. Um, any anything I'm missing? Uh, because well, I want everybody to have a great time. No, I would just I would recommend that uh, obviously the general admission tickets are on sale now, but also the VIP tickets. Um, VIP tickets uh, have historically sold out. So if you have any idea of wanting to get a VIP ticket, I'd get it now just to make sure, because it will sell out this year. And again. With all the things that we've got planned, um, I, I think it's you know it's the, it's a no brainer to to go for the VIP this year and and uh, really get to enjoy you know what's going to happen. All right, I saved my most embarrassing question for me at the end. Is it pronounced the Cleveland IX Center or the Nine Center? We've always called it the IX Center. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to stick with that for now because I've been avoiding pronouncing it uh, every time I've talked to somebody now for, for almost a year. Well, if, so. you really, if you really want to know, it's the I and there's a, a dash, a mark, and then the X. So it's IX. International, yeah. Uh, international, actually. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. All right. Well, see, I saved that to the end. And hopefully people tuned out when I, when I gave all the good information earlier. No. Um, but Ray, thank you for coming on. It's always a pleasure to see you. I will catch up with you in Cleveland for sure. All right, Danny. Thank you for having me. No, absolutely. For everybody else, we'll see you on the next episode, Hobby News Daily, and check out hobbynewsdaily.com. New articles every day, podcast every morning, 20 writers putting out new articles. So definitely check it out. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.